So far we've looked at different types of functions that we can take the derivative of. So we know how to take the derivative of polynomial functions. And we can take the derivative of products using the product rule. We can take the derivative of quotients or rational functions using the quotient rule. And we can take the derivative of trig functions because we've learned some formula for those trig functions and their derivatives. But what about ones that are more complicated? Say one like y equals 2 sine of x cubed. Well, how we take the derivative of complicated functions like this is we make a substitution for part of the function. So if our function is y equals 2 sine of x cubed and we're asked to find dy dx, we can make a substitution for x cubed. So let's let a new variable u equal x cubed. This would change our equation now to y equals 2 sine of u. So our new equation, y equals 2 sine u. The problem, though, that's created when x is replaced with u is that the function is no longer expressed in terms of x. So we've lost our x. So we need a new way of finding the derivative of dy dx because we don't have x as our variable anymore. We have u. So we can use this method when we replace x with a new variable u. So just look at this right here. dy dx would equal dy du, the derivative of y with respect to u, times the derivative of u with respect to x. And I think you could see that the respect to u parts would end up canceling each other out and we would have dy dx. So our derivative formula involves finding the derivative of two different functions. The derivative of y with respect to u and the derivative of u with respect to x. Now let's look at how we would do this question using that formula. So we already said that we were going to let u equal x cubed. This gives us y equals 2 sine u. So now if we want to find dy dx, this will equal the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. And we have two derivatives to find. So we now have two derivatives that we need to find, and I'm just going to split these up into two separate parts. So the derivative of y with respect to u. Well, where's that equation? That's this one right here. We know that y is equal to 2 sine u. So the derivative of y with respect to u, see, remember the derivative of sine u? Cosine u, that's right. So dy du would be 2 cosine u. Now this one here, du dx, we need an equation for du dx. Here's the equation where u is in terms of x. So u equals x cubed. Therefore, du dx is 3x squared. So now, using our formula, dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx we can simply fill these things in. <clears throat> dy du, we said that was 2 cosine of u times du dx, which is over here at 3x squared. And then the last step is to replace your u with, with x again. So you can see in our answer here, we have cosine of u, but u was x cubed. So when I replace the u with x cubed, I would get this. And then we can tie it up a little bit. 2 times 3 is 6. And usually we write our x squareds or whatever other variable is raised to some power. We usually we write that before our trig just to avoid any confusion. So we would end up with 6x squared 
cosine of x cubed. Example two says y is x squared minus 7x plus 1 all to the power of 15. Find dy dx. Well, we could multiply that out 15 times, boil it out 15 times. That would give us a huge big polynomial, which we could take the derivative of. But I don't think anybody's going to be too uh, excited about doing that. So we're going to make a substitution. Now, when you're picking something to substitute, usually, and this just comes with some practice, but usually you are going to let u be equal to the innermost part of the function. Okay, so if we let u be equal to this middle piece, then our function is simply now going to become y equals u to the power of 15. So now to find dy dx, this would equal oops, dy du times du dx. And we got two derivatives that we need to find. dy du means we need the equation of with y, y equals f of u. So that's this one right here. y equals u to the power of 15. So the derivative of that function with respect to u, a simple power rule, 15 down in front, reduce it by 1. And then du dx, we need the u function, that's this one. So du dx is equal to 2x minus 7. So now that we've taken our two derivatives, we can put these together. dy dx is dy du times du dx. So this should be dy du was 15 uh, u to the power of 14 times du dx, which is 2x minus 7. And finally, then, we can replace the u. What was u? u was x squared minus 7x plus 1. So 15 times x squared, whoops, minus 7x plus 1, all to the power of 14 times 2x minus 7. That would be the derivative of that function, which is certainly a lot easier than having to multiply it out 15 times. So quickly, let's look at example three. Y equals tan of 3x squared minus 1. Find dy dx. Let's let u equal 3x squared minus 1 so that we have y equals tan of u. And now to find the derivative dy dx will be dy du times du dx. Well, let's put these two derivatives up. Derivative of y with respect to u. Whoops. I'll write the equation down again. The y equation was tan u. So dy du. Derivative of tan is secant squared. U. And du dx, the u formula, was u equals 3x squared minus 1. So du dx will be 6x. And so d, whoa, dy dx will be dy du times du dx. The derivative of y with respect to u, that's right here, secant squared of u times du dx, that's right here, 6x. I'll write the 6x first, and I will replace the u with 3x squared minus 1. All right, we're going to step her up a notch here to a level two. 
chain rule question. Y equals cosine of the square root of 2x minus 1. Now in this one, we're asked to find dy dx, of course, again. If this one, if we let u equal 2x minus 1, then we would have this equation. Y equals the cosine of the square root of u. Which is not something that we can take the derivative of yet either. Because what are we going to do with the square root of u? So we could write this as y equals cosine of u to the one half, but we still have a problem taking the derivative of that. So we need some way of dealing with the u to the one half. So one of the things that we can do is make another substitution to deal with questions as they get more and more complex. So we have a problem in that we still can't take the derivative of this, so we will now let a new variable, let's say v, equal u to the power of one half. And so now our question becomes y equals cosine of v, which we can take the derivative of. And so how does dy dx look now? Well, dy du times du dv, because we added another variable, times dv dy, x, yes. And so the du's, there they are canceling, the dv's, dv's canceling, we would still end up with dy dx. So we now have three derivatives to calculate. We need dy du, so we need the y uh, formula, we need a u formula, and we need a v formula, all of which we should have farther up there. So dy du, we need the y uh, function. So that was right here. y is equal to cosine, oh, sorry, no, we need dy in terms of, oh, I did this wrong. I'm sorry. This needs to be dv, because that was our most recent variable that we introduced. So dy with respect to v, the most recent variable that we introduced needs to go underneath dy, because that will be our simplest form of the equation in terms of y. So y equals cosine v. The derivative of y with respect to v would be derivative of cosine is negative sine v. Now, what would we need a formula in terms of v? Well, v is equal to u to the power of one half. So, what is dv du? Well an exponent, so we can bring the u down in, or one half down in front and reduce it by one. And then this part here says we need an equation in terms of u and x. Here's that one. u is equal to 2x minus one. So du dx equals two. So we had three different derivatives that we needed to find. We had to go back up here to find the equation that related to each of those derivatives, and they all ended up being very simple derivatives, which we now have here. So now if we want to find dy dx, this should equal dy dv times dv du times du dx, which is minus sine v times one half u to the minus one half times two. And now it's a matter of substituting in our variables. You can see here that one half times two are going to cancel out. 
So we would just have minus sine v, but v is equal to u to the one half here, right? So replacing the v with u to the one half would give me this times we lost this one half, so we just have u, and u is 2x minus 1. And we're still not done because we have a u in here, so we would replace that with 2x minus 1 to the 1 half. And finally, oh, I'm going to run out of room here. There, right, now we've got a bit more room. So we're at this stage right here, so negative sine, this is to the power of 1 half, which means the square root of 2x minus 1. And notice this has a negative exponent, so I can put it in the denominator. And it too is to the power of 1 half, so we have the square root of 2x minus 1.